In this video, we're going to be looking at this problem, RLE Iterator. RLE here stands for Run Length Encoding, and it's a way to encode a sequence of integers. We're given an array of integers called encoding, and for all even i, encoding i tells us the number of times that encoding i plus 1 is repeated in the sequence. Let's say that you have the sequence 88855. Its encoding would be 3825, since 8 repeats itself 3 times in a row, and then 5 repeats itself 2 times in a row. However, that's not the only valid run length encoding. You also have 380925. This is the same thing, but we repeat 0, 090 0 times. Or 281825, since we repeat 8 2 times, then 8 1 time, then 5 2 times. So basically what this example tells us is that the encoding given is not necessarily the most optimal encoding. We want to implement the RLE iterator class with this method next n, which exhausts the next n elements and returns the last element exhausted in this way. And if there are no elements, it returns negative one. So let's look at this example. So first we initialize RLE iterator with 380925. Then next two exhausts two terms, returning eight. The remaining sequence is now 855. Next one exhausts one item, returning 8. The remaining sequence is now 5-5. Five, five. Next one then exhausts one term, returning 5. And the remaining sequence is now 5. And then finally we do next 2. Well, we exhaust 5, but then there's no more terms left in the sequence, so we return negative 1. Okay, let's break this question down. Let's think about how we would iterate through a regular array, and then use that as the starting point. So let's make the array 88855. Well, iterating through an array is easy. We just use an index. So if we visualize it, that index starts at zero. And then on every iteration, we increment the index by one. So if we call next n on an array, we increment the index by n. Next two, and we increment index by two, like this. So it seems simple enough. Let's see how we might use an index to iterate through an encoded array. Let's use this encoding, 3825. On every iteration, instead of incrementing the index by one first, why don't we just decrement the current count by one? Then only once we reach zero do we increment the index by two, since all the even indices give us the count for the next number in the sequence. Let's see this in action. So let's start off the index i at zero. So on the first iteration, encoding i, which is three, is not zero. So then we decrement it by one, and then we return eight. Then on the next iteration, encoding i is not zero, so we decrement it by one, and we return eight again, and then again. But now encoding i is zero, so let's increment i by two to jump to the next even index. Now encoding i is not zero, so we decrement it by one, and then return five. And then we do that again, and then return five. And now it is zero again, so then we increment i by two. But now i is out of bounds, so then any calls to next here is going to return negative one. Let's translate this into pseudocode. Start off with i equals zero, and then for the next method, so if encoding i is equal to zero, we're going to increment i by two. Now if i is outside the bounds of encoding, we're going to return negative one. We're going to decrement encoding at i, and then we're going to return encoding i plus one, since that's the actual value. Now the question is, does this work on all valid encodings? And the answer is no, it does not, but it's a great start. So this breaks down when we have an encoding like this. So let's step through this i starts at zero here. So first we decrement this by one, we return eight, then we decrement it by one and return eight, and then we decrement it by one, turn eight again. But now on the next iteration, we increment the index by two, but the index is going to be here and we're gonna decrement this by one and we're gonna incorrectly return nine. And now in general, we're in a weird state. And not only could there 
uh, be this one zero nine pair, but there could be multiple pairs leading with zero. What we really want to do here is not just check if encoding i equals zero, but rather keep incrementing i by two until we find a value encoding i that is greater than zero. So let's replace this with keep incrementing i by two until encoding i is greater than zero. So now this solution works. However, we assumed here that next iterates one at a time, but in fact, we call next n to iterate through the next n elements. A brute force way of dealing with this is that we could just use this algorithm here and run it n times and return the value where it ends up. However, this is incredibly inefficient in the case that the encoding counts are huge numbers. So for example, what if we had this encoding? 1e9, which is 1 billion, and 1. So essentially we have 1 repeated a billion times. So if we try to call next on 1e9, well, this algorithm would run 1 billion times. So let's try to rework our algorithm and decrease the encoding count in a more clever way. Here, encoding i minus minus, we're decrementing encoding i by 1. But instead, why don't we de decrease n in a way? So when n is greater than the current encoding i, we'll reduce encoding i to 0 directly, and then we'll subtract encoding i from n. Whenever this happens, we increment i by 2 as usual, but we keep repeating this until either i is out of bounds or n is less than or equal to encoding i. So let's see this in action. Let's start off with this encoding again. Where the index i starts off at 0. Let's say that we try to do next 4. Well here n equals 4. n is greater than encoding i, which is 3. So we reduce it to 0 directly. Then we reduce n by 3. And then we also increment i by 2. Well, now n is greater than encoding i, which is 0, but it's already 0, so let's increment i by 2. Now n is less than or equal to 2, so we reduce encoding i by n. So 2 minus 1 equals 1, and now n equals 0, and then we return 5. Let's see how this will work on the 1 billion 1 array. So when we call next 1e9, n here is 1e9, 1 billion. So since n is less than or equal to encoding i, which is 1 billion as well, we do 1 billion minus a billion, which equals 0. This becomes 0, and this becomes 0 directly. And then we increment i by 2. And then we also return 1. And then on all subsequent calls to next, we return negative 1. But clearly you see here that we do the calculation in one step rather than one billion steps. Let's update the pseudocode. So first let's remove these three lines. What we really want is this. So while i is within the bounds of encoding and n is greater than encoding i, we're going to reduce n by encoding i. Encoding i is going to become zero directly. And then we're going to increment i by 2. Now at this point, if i is outside the bounds of encoding, we're going to return negative 1. And then we're also going to reduce encoding i by n. And then we're going to return encoding i plus 1. Great, this looks good. So let's look at the time complexity for this function next n. So in the worst case, n is greater than all of the encoding counts. So an example would be if n is 1, but the encoding array is something like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on for the entire array. Well, this while loop over here would have to step through at most n over 2 indices, since it only steps through even indices, which is O n. The other steps are O 1. So overall, the time complexity is going to be O n. Since we don't use any additional space, the space complexity is O 1. However, this does depend on whether we count the space used in the input, which here is the encoding array. So since we act, we do actively modify the encoding array, this would technically be on. Just something to keep in mind to explain during an actual interview. Okay, let's implement this in Java. So first we're going to have a field called encoding, 
and also field index. I'm going to set encoding. And we're going to initialize the index to be zero. Now, while index is less than encoding dot length, so while it's in bounds and n is greater than encoding index, we're going to reduce n by encoding index. Encoding index is going to become zero directly. And then we're going to increment index by two. And at this point, if the index is out of bounds, greater or equal to encoding the length, we're going to return negative one. And then we're also going to decrement encoding index and reduce it by n. And then finally, we're going to return encoding index plus one. This pretty much follows the pseudocode directly. Okay, let's submit this. Great, and you'll see that it passes. And that's how you solve this problem, RLE Iterator.